Qualifying on the pole for the first time in her career is Kelly Blackwater in the number 35 for ROG Motorsports. Kale Burnfart Jr. starting on the outside. As we go back further through the field, Hank Jr., Wheat Farmer, and Dan Foray there. Qualifying was a bit uh, wacky considering it took place in the rain. So some drivers managed to get times on intermediate tires and slicks while others stuck to their normal wet tires. Cars that start on the wet tires are in the back. So as we go further through the field, we'll, you'll see some surprises back in the field, including championship leader Nicholas Corridovos. Corridovos, in first practice, got uh, into a bit of trouble with the officials. He managed to uh, wreck two cars, uh, didn't even give them a chance to get out of the way, and he has been assessed a warning by PCC Cup Series officials who have seemingly turned up for the first time in uh, what seems like ages to one of these races. So with officials here laying down the law, it's going to be interesting to see what happens uh, with the officials having their eye on Nicholas Corridovos, who is starting very deep in the field. He is starting uh, 35th for this race. There you see him uh, right next to his teammate Brian Gallagher there. Uh, many very good cars starting in the back of the field. There's Barney Ward starting 39th. He led final practice. And rounding out the back of the field is James Hewitt and Ian Ellis, who did not set times in qualifying. Now, coming to take the green flag, Kelly Blackwater leads the field. Cale Burnfart Jr. on the inside there. Looks like we're a bit strung out in the back. No matter. Uh, we've got great racing here up at the front. As looks like Dan Frey is making a move three wide for second place. Uh, Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer there runs it a bit wide. But it appears that there's no problems in the back. Everyone's made it through the first couple turns clean as Kelly Blackwater clears the field and pulls out to a lead headed down into Station 5. Cale Burnfart Jr. has done the same thing with second place. He is clear of the rest of the field, but from third on back, it is a logjam. Oh, looks like we've got some contact there. Oh, a bunch of cars around. Oh, we're stacking them up. We're stacking them up here in Station 5. To kind of take a look here, Daniel Sharp got spun around by Preston Bell. Wow. Nobody's using brakes. We've got cars piling into each other. Looks like Alina Lazareva's there. Ike Durbin, who started in the back here. We're going on board with Louis Ballard, who had already moved up a few positions, and he just got spun by Akio Gifu, who got turned uh, by his teammate, uh, the 366. And Louis Ballard's going to get bogged down in that sand trap, and he's going to get towed back to the pits. Very tough break for the 8 car here today. Here's Alina Lazareva. Uh, the 2014 series champion as she gets spun around by her teammate Brian Gallagher. Uh, no love lost between those two. And uh, Frank Azzaretto there is involved going on board with Barbara Burt making a pass there on Chris Benson and people just are not using their brakes. What were they thinking? Uh, looks like Joe Craig went around there in the 26 and uh, a lot of cars managed to avoid this up at the front but in the back, most people got stacked up. Kelly Blackwater continues to lead over Kale Burnfart Jr., who has uh, notoriously had no success on these road courses. But Kelly Blackwater, this is easily the best performance of her career so far. Now, Nicholas Cordovos, as I mentioned before, was warned about wrecking cars in first practice. He wrecked two cars, the 969 and the 70, uh, in first practice and was given a warning by the officials if he uh, causes any more incidents, he will be penalized during the race. Here's Ben Atkins running in 24th place, and oh, he just made contact with Chris Benson. He's around in the middle of the track. Uh, looks like we've got a log jam there. Oh, that was Andy Lambert in the 34 who got involved. So did, uh, looks like Daniel Sharp there, and the entire right front quarter panel just got ripped off the 34 car. Watch here, as he just had nowhere to go. He wanted to keep it on the racetrack. Grass is still a bit wet from the rain, and that is going to end the 34's day early on. Bunch of cars coming into the pits at the end of lap one. Looks like Greg Woodard's in. Uh, believe I saw Brian Gallagher and a couple other cars who were damaged in that wreck uh, in station five. Now here is Ryan Matthews, who is having a great run. He is currently the worst running of the Zach Tech Motorsports team cars, and he's in the top 10. He just got passed by Duncan Cobb, who is having a fantastic showing so far today. He's running up in the top 10, too. Now we're going to go on board with, this is the 12 car, this is Gaspar D'Souza, who uh, started way back in the field, and at the end of lap 2, he is making his way up to 10th place. Uh, make that 11th, 12th now. He did not have a very good corner, but still, 
Gaspar D'Souza has cut his way through the field and he is knocking on the door of the top 10 already and it just started lap number 3. Here is uh, Andy Lambert who is limping back to the pits. Uh, this is for- oh wow! He just got dumped by Greg Woodard. That was, uh, that was kinda uncalled for. And, uh, the PCC Cup Series officials agreed they slapped Greg Woodard with a warning. Uh, this is Ike Durbin who, despite starting in the back and spinning, uh, in Station 5, he's back up to 25th place already. So, he had worked his way up a few positions by the time he got to Station 5, spun around, and he is making his way back up through the field. He just got around Chris Benson, who, if, if uh, my understanding is correct, uh, he is not long for that ride. He's not bringing uh, much sponsorship to that car. And uh, lap number three, this is Ben Worthington running in sixth place, and he just got dumped into the tires by uh, Duncan Cobb, and the officials are giving Duncan Cobb a warning. If he does another stunt like that, I believe he will be given a 15 second time penalty, if uh, my understanding is correct. Uh, PCC Cup Series officials giving uh, 15 and then 30 second time penalties for uh, second and third offenders uh, without uh, Nicholas Cordovo is being the exception. Tom Delgado pulls it into the pits on lap number three, so does James Hewitt, and we've got a bunch of takers. Uh, ben Atkins there at the end of lap number three, and uh, just a lot of cars coming into the pits. Here's Ryan Matthews, who's still running up in the uh, top ten, and uh, Barry Juveno is having a great run as well. He's currently uh, in tenth place trying to pass Ryan Matthews, and this is uh, honestly the best run of uh, Barry Juveno's year. Uh, Juveno has been criticized by Chris Benson as uh, Chris Benson in the 55 as the one who needs to be fired uh, because he's not performing as well as he should. Uh, Chris Benson not being very popular over at the Stephens Racing Garage. Going on board with Kuga Hakai as oh there goes uh, Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer off from fourth place and uh, he just stuffed it in the, in the tires. <laughs> uh, Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer uh, that's gonna put him way back here as Duncan Cobb has slashed his way through the field he is passing uh, his teammate for fourth place here that's Kuga Hakai in the 77 Duncan Cobb in the 79 and that's gonna be a pass for position as Duncan Cobb takes over the position coming up this long straightaway here and Duncan Cobb is quickly emerging as uh, having one of the strongest cars in the field uh, Ramsey Cockner brings his car into the pit so does Barbara Burt and we've got a battle right here this is, um, actually no, this isn't a battle. This is the eight car being back on track. He managed to get himself uh, refired in the pits and he is continuing on, albeit three laps down. Kelly Blackwater now encountering lap traffic. He, uh, Greg Woodard just uh, got put a lap down and Kelly Blackwater is continuing to extend her lead over Kale Bernfart Jr. Now here we are on lap number five still and Nicholas Cordovos is challenging John Jefferson for the 7th position. So Cordovos has worked up 28 positions in just 5 laps. Now he makes the move on the outside, he is going to pull alongside John Jefferson, but Jefferson's going to provide a bit of uh, a bit of resistance. Ultimately though, Cordovos would take the position at the start of lap number 6. Lap number 6, here we have, uh, this is Dan Foray who has managed to catch Cale Bernfart Jr. Dan Foray actually performing quite well. He did not uh, have a very good Road America in 2014, the last time that the PCC Cup Series ran here. Uh, he threw it off in the carousel, and that ended his day fairly early on. But it looks like he's having much better luck here today. Oh, he just gave uh, Bernfart Jr. the bumper. Uh, Bernfart Jr. not moving out of the way for the faster car, although he is entitled to do that. He is entitled to stay where he is and defend as much as possible. Now, Nicholas Cordovos. Station 5, lap number 6, he's up to 5th place. And now he's making a pass here on Kuga Hakai for 4th. So Nicholas Cordovos is on the move, he is the fastest car on the track currently. And uh, he is trying to pass Kuga Hakai, but he's not going to be able to do that running wide like that. Uh, looks like Gaspar D'Souza there in the back is also making headway, he's currently up to 7th. And Kuga Hakai is going to slide wide, and Cordovos is going to take the position away. This is Ike Durbin who is up to 15th place. He started uh, in the second to last row, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, looks like we've got a slow car there that is, uh, that looks like Tom Wilson. And uh, 
actually, remember how I said that Cordova's was the fastest car on the track? That is not the case. This is the fastest car on the track. James Hewitt is currently in 22nd place. He made a pit stop early on, but he is the fastest car on the track right now. Uh, probably due to having a much cleaner track than Cordova's does. Here is Dan Ferre, and uh, looks like looks like Duncan Cobb is entering the battle for second place. Uh, Ferre going side by side with Cale Bernfart Jr. Oh wow, what a slide by Duncan Cobb there. Still side by side, and Dan Ferre is going to slide into the grass, and Cale Bernfart Jr. is going to hold off Dan Ferre for the time being. Bernfart Jr. is definitely uh, losing time to Blackwater here. Now in lap number 7 of 39, here is Mark Burt. Uh, he is making a challenge on Candice Bowman and Kyuga Hakai for the 7th and 8th position. He's currently in 9th place. Now Mark Burt has been one of the best rookies so far in this 2016 class, and it's going to be really interesting to see how he performs here in the coming weeks. Uh, rising star Mark Burt is in the PCC Cup Series. Here is Dan Ferre. He's going to adopt an alternate pit strategy, pulling into the pits on lap number 7. Uh, he wasn't really making any moves uh, up towards the front anymore, so I think he's trying to pass cars through unconventional means. Uh, speaking of passing cars, Duncan Cobb hasn't been able to pass Cale Bernfart Jr. Uh, Bernfart Jr. is blocking uh, quite well. He hasn't done any slashing or impeding. Well, he's been impeding, but he hasn't really... Uh, it's all been legal so far. Oh, wow! Looks like uh, Gaspar de Souza almost took out his points rival, Nicholas Cordovos. These two are second and third in points. Uh, Cordovos having the edge over Gaspar de Souza. Now, this is the battle for second place. Uh, in front of these cars is Cale Bernfart Jr. and Duncan Cobb. Uh, coming into Canada Corner, looks like Cale Bernfart Jr. ran a bit wide. Duncan Cobb making a move to the inside, trying not to spin him out like he did with uh, Ben Worthington. And it looks like Cobb is going to make the move here, coming into this final turn. And Duncan Cobb is going to make the pass stick. Here, in 7th place, is Tom Wilson, who's having an awesome run in the number 31 car. Now, Tom Wilson, he likes to describe himself as the championship caliber test driver. That is because he drove for this team, Johnson Racing, when they won the 2010 PCC Cup Series Championship with Ken Harleston. He was the test driver for that team and uh, he believes he is the reason why that team won the championship because of his impeccable testing abilities. Here is the end of the day for Scott Wellen, who uh, after a miserable day pulls it into the pits. Uh, he is not going to return to the race due to electrical issues. Uh, looks like Gaspar D'Souza managed to get around Cale Bernfart Jr. for the third position. Here is uh, Kelly Blackwater who has opened up a massive lead. Uh, this is She has a five second lead. Uh, at the start of lap number nine and uh, with Duncan Cobb in second place I think that's going to continue to grow as Kelly Blackwater's had a clean track and she's been able to get the heat into her tires uh, much more effectively than Duncan Cobb has. James Hewitt, still the fastest lap uh, holder, is in 18th place. He's managed to pass a few more cars that have pulled into the pits and uh, he still holds fastest lap here. Uh, here is Candace Bowman, who is running in the top 10, uh, getting past... Oh, she just got dumped by Ike Durbin. Uh, Durbin will receive a warning for this from the... Oh, that is the end of the day for Ian Elias as well. And uh, Candace Bowman, I'm sure, is going to be furious about that, considering that she was having uh, probably her best run of the career... Uh, best run of her career, and Ian Elias just had nowhere to go. Uh, can't really expect a spinning car on track like that uh, to move out of the way. And uh, that's going to be the end of the day for the 32 team who was moving their way through the field as well. Uh, Gaspar D'Souza now challenging. Uh, he managed to get around Corridovos. So now D'Souza planning on moving up to second place. But Duncan Cobb is providing fierce opposition there in that 79 car. We haven't seen runs like this from Cobb since 2014. So Duncan Cobb experiencing uh, seemingly a resurgence here at Road America, which was uh, one of his better tracks back in 2014. And he's still side by side. Uh, going into Station 5, he's going to try and hold off both Gaspar de Souza and Corridovos. Uh, well, these cars are all catching Kelly Blackwater. 
and uh, he is just doing an impeccable job of defending, still side by side with Gaspar D'Souza, and let's see here, oh, D'Souza runs wide, and he is going to concede the position to Duncan Cobb, so Duncan Cobb continuing to hold off these uh, much faster cars, oh, he runs a bit wide, and I think that might be him surrendering the position to Gaspar D'Souza, but D'Souza has a problem. D'Souza just dropped a cylinder, it sounds like. He's reporting that that car is down a cylinder, and that is a heartbreak for the 12 team who were hoping to make uh, massive gains in the championship here today, possibly even leapfrogging Cordovos and Ike Durbin uh, to take the championship lead. But that is going to be a huge blow uh, to Gaspar D'Souza's day. One car that's kind of uh, slid under the radar so far is this one, the 26 of Joe Craig, who is currently... Uh, running up in P9. So, excellent job for Joe Craig so far, who really hasn't been known for his road course prowess either. James Hewitt, still the fastest lap holder, has worked his way into traffic. Now he has gained quite a few positions. He is up to 12th place, battling with Frank Azzaretto now for 11th. And uh, Hewitt, it looks like he might be able to make the uh, pass stick on the outside, and uh, he's going to do so. He has been rocketing through the field. Uh, Duncan Cobb having one less car to worry about, still catching uh, Kelly Blackwater, whose lead is now down to two seconds. And uh, Cordovas is going to sneak on by there on the outside. Let's see if he can actually hold it uh, through this turn. Cordovas is going to run it a bit wide, kick up some dirt. Uh, still side by side, Duncan Cobb is having one hell of a race. He is holding off Nicholas Cordovas on merit. And... Uh, still catching Kelly Blackwater, so we might see a battle for the lead here in a few laps. Uh, this is uh, lap number 12 of 39. Oh, looks like Cordova's making a move on the inside. He might be able to take it here. No, Cordova's has to check up. So Duncan Cobb now, lap number 12. He is going to pull into the pits. Duncan Cobb uh, not gambling on strategy. This is a scheduled stop. Uh, Joe Craig actually continuing to move up. He got around Kuga Hakai and he managed to get around Mark Burt. So uh, the 26 car is now up to seventh place. An impressive run so far for Joe Craig, who has really had nothing uh, to smile about so far this year. Ike Durbin has a uh, warning so far. He is running in sixth place right behind uh, Tom Wilson, who's moved into the top five. Tom Wilson uh, having easily one of his best performances of the season. And it looks like Ike Durbin is going to commit to the pit lane here. Uh, looks like we've got normal green flag stops happening. Uh, Kelly Blackwater, lap number 13. Uh, she has managed... Actually, this is lap number 14, sorry. 14 of 39. Uh, starting to get close to the halfway point, but uh, Corridovos is gaining on Kelly Blackwater very rapidly. Uh, Blackwater... While she has led the first 13 laps, I do not believe she has the fastest car. She just managed to benefit from clean air. And I think that we're going to be seeing a lead change here very soon. Coming through the carousel, Cordovos is catching her. And Cordovos is going to make it look easy. Nicholas Cordovos takes the lead on lap number 14 very easily here going through uh, the kink there and Cordovos is going to hold the lead over Kelly Blackwater, and he's even starting to pull away a bit. So Nicholas Cordovos uh, back out front. Uh, here we've got a battle for third place. Uh, Kale Burnfart Jr. is still hanging around up in the top five, uh, despite being a few seconds uh, slower than the surrounding cars, but uh, Tom Wilson's going to take that position very easily. Kelly Blackwater surrendering the lead, and now she pulls it into the pits. Uh, looks like we've also got Burnfart Jr., and uh, that is the 26 car, 566 also in, so is the 24. And uh, this is the uh, 49 car of Brian Gallagher, who just kind of ran wide on his own in the final turn. Uh, Brian Gallagher really hasn't had the best day so far. He's up in... Uh, he's, he's running pretty far back. Uh, honestly. Uh, Kelly Blackwater just came out of the pits, and uh, let's see who she came out in front of. Let's see, there's Alina Lazareva. So Kelly Blackwater is out of the pits, and uh, she did come out... Uh, she was behind the 79. So the 79 did have an excellent pit stop as Cordova brings his car into the pits. Here, 
is James Hewitt, who is staying out, and he is actually the leader right now. So James Hewitt, uh, on his alternate strategy, has managed to take the lead back. Kelly Blackwater uh, running behind... Oh! She just got hooked. Uh, Kelly Blackwater just got hooked into the inside wall by Alina Lazareva. So there goes a promising run for Kelly Blackwater, although that's not a lot of damage. That's going to set her behind quite a few cars that she had managed to stay in front of on track. And that's definitely going to put a hamper on her day. There's Kale Bernfart Jr. right behind her. So that tells you how far she just dropped back from that. James Hewitt brings his car into... That's not James Hewitt. That was uh, Kyuga Hakai. Kyuga Hakai was running in third place at the time. James Hewitt stays out an extra lap. And Barney Ward is currently in second place. So the Team Ben Atkins cars are rolling the dice on pit strategy. This is lap number... Uh, 17. Uh, so they definitely managed to stretch their fuel economy quite a bit, as at the end of lap number 17, both of them pull their cars into the pits. At the end of lap number 17, Nicholas Cordovos is going to pass the two Team Ben Atkins cars who are sitting in the pit lane, and Cordovos is going to retake the lead. Coming down the front stretch, there the Team uh, Ben Atkins cars sitting in the pit lane. Uh, Frank Azzaretto currently running in 12th place, facing a challenge from Sapphire Anderson. Anderson hooks the rear end and sends him into the tire wall. That car gets a bit airborne. Uh, Azzaretto would be okay, uh, but Sapphire Anderson would receive a warning from PCC Cup Series officials for aggressive driving. Uh, looked like uh, she might, it might have been a racing incident, but uh, ultimately uh, PCC Cup Series officials gave her a warning. Uh, Ramsey Cockner pit at the end of lap 18, lap 19, got Cordovos uh, running right behind Lewis Jones, and he just turned him into the tire wall. Lewis Jones' lapped car didn't even give him a chance to get out of the way, and that was where he wrecked two cars in first practice one, and I I'm not surprised by that at all. PCC Cup Series officials handing Nicholas Cordovos a 15 second active time penalty, and that is going to set him back uh, quite a bit here today. Uh, looks like Kyuga Hakai is having some issues with the fuel pickup on that number 77 Dodge. Uh, very tough break for him. He was running in the top 10 when this happened. So Kyuga, Kyuga Hakai, bad run, uh, or rather a good run gone bad. Now Duncan Cobb, uh, with Nicholas Korodovos' active time penalty, this puts Duncan Cobb in the lead of the race with Ike Durbin in second. So Duncan Cobb, who, I'm going to be honest, is driving for one of the worst teams in the PCC Cup Series paddock um, based on results. I mean, they've had some flashes of brilliance, but uh, I'm entirely surprised by this. He is in contention to win. And what was that? Alina Lazareva just dumped Barry Juvenile from a top 10 position, and she just drove her car into the tires? Um... Yeah, PCC Cup Series officials are going to have a word with the driver of the 59 car after that stunt. Uh, especially after she did uh, hook and uh, spin the 35 car, and that ended a very promising run for Barry Juveno, who has had a miserable season so far. So Barry Juveno, understandably furious after uh, that. And this is lap number 21. We've got a battle for the lead! Uh, granted, these cars are running second and third on track, but with Nicholas Cordova's active time penalty, this is the battle for the lead. Duncan Cobb trying to hold off uh, Ike Durbin in the two car, and Duncan Cobb, he's held off Cordova's and Gaspar D'Souza earlier in the race, and I think he might be able to do the same uh, fairly easily here, uh, as he continues to hold off Ike Durbin. Uh, going on board with Cordova's, and we've got a smoking car, that's Barry Juveno, and um, yeah, what was that about? Uh, Cordovos just ran into the... Did his spotter not tell him that he was there? Nicholas Cordovos' brain has seemingly gone out the window the past few laps, as Barry Juveno is not really uh, giving the leaders too much room, and it looks like uh, Durbin's going to make a move on the inside, and Ike Durbin takes the lead away from uh, Duncan Cobb fairly easily, there on the inside coming through the final turn held up by Barry Juveno and uh, Duncan Cobb slips back to second place uh, here is Corradovos who is uh, actually just about worked his way back up into the lead he is a 14 second lead and oh no <laughs> 
he did he just dumped Greg Woodard into that tire wall and uh, yep that's that's completely warranted uh, 30 second time penalty I added on to uh, Cordova's 15 second one so that's gonna put him 45 seconds in time penalties back uh, Ike Durbin uh, your clear leader uh, he's opened up a gap over Duncan Cobb who uh, is not nearly as fast as the two car is uh, this is Joe Craig who is continuing a strong run he's up in the top 10 still he's running in 10th place despite not having nearly the fastest car I believe he's run the 25th fastest lap of all cars on track but he is still running in the top 10 so very good job by Joe Craig who is very down in the points this is uh, not really gone uh, Cordova's way, as uh, he's roughly in sixth place uh, right now. Uh, looks like the 466 car of Akio Gifu's is going from bad to worse as he drives off in the carousel. And uh, yeah, that's the end of his day as he hits the tires and he's going to park the car there out of the way to avoid any kind of local yellows from coming out as uh, looks like Kurt Pliskin has moved up into the top 10 now he is up to ninth place as he uh, got around the 26 car and the 49 so Kurt Pliskin having an excellent run here today uh, we haven't really seen much of him near the front and it looks like he's catching Cale Bernfart Jr. too uh, James Hewitt now Hewitt is in fourth place this is on merit uh, he has uh, fixed his pit strategy, so he is on the correct cycle as everyone else, and he is up to fourth place. Uh, his teammate, Ben Atkins, currently running up in the top ten, uh, he is in eighth place, and this is uh, one of Ben's best showings so far. So Ben Atkins having an excellent showing, although he uh, had to check up there, and he is going to lose three positions. So Ben Atkins is going to fall out of the top ten with that move and uh, looks like Duncan Cobb's going to pull into the pits on lap number uh, 27. Oh no, uh, Tom Wilson just broke down from fifth place so that's going to be the end. No, that was third place. Tom Wilson out from a podium position so a very tough break. He just he broke down right past the pit lane too. That's going to take a very long time for him to get towed back and uh, that's basically going to consign him to uh, a very poor finish. Ike Durbin pulls into the pits from the lead, and that's going to hand the lead over to uh, the 155 car of James Hewitt, who has uh, snuck his way through the field, and he is leading. Uh, Lenny Jacobs now, lap number 29. He is going to break down uh, suspension issues on the, 20, or on the uh, 52 car on lap number 29 is going to uh, cause him to park that car on the side of the track uh, out of everyone's way I believe as uh, looks like everyone seems to be avoiding him and uh, Cordovos is going to bring his car into the pits here and uh, now Barney Ward is up to third place doing his own thing he's uh, kind of stuck to James Hewitt's pit strategy as well and he is running in third place so a podium on the line for Barney Ward Oh, Tom Delgado, who was not really having a great run. He was in 18th place, just blew up. So uh, I guess it, that, that just put him out of his misery. Uh, Tom Delgado out from 18th place. Same lap after passing Tom Delgado for the 18th position. Alex Phillips in the 71 breaks down, so nobody seems to want 18th place today. Uh, as Alex Phillips stops his car entering the carousel and uh, that's going to be the end of his day Tom Delgado there uh, smoking might be able to pass him again James Hewitt brings his car into the pits uh, surrendering the lead over to um, I believe he's going to surrender the lead over oh no Ben Atkins has blown up from a top 10 position uh, it, just as you think he's going to have a great run something bad happens Ben Atkins has really had terrible luck. He's last in points, and uh, it's not going to get any better uh, Ike for him today. Ike Durbin now uh, back in the lead as James Hewitt comes out of the pits. Uh, Ike Durbin uh, looking like he's going to run away with this one here. Uh, although there's still about nine laps to go. Uh, looks like, yeah, Duncan Cobb managed to beat James Hewitt out of the pits, so Duncan Cobb is in second place. 
uh, holding steady over uh, James Hewitt, who's quite a few bit, uh, quite a few seconds back. Uh, Corridovo's right now, uh, with the active time penalty, would be sixth. So he is quite a few seconds ahead of uh, Ike Durbin and Duncan Cobb and James Hewitt, but uh, with the 45 second active time penalty, he is in sixth place currently. So uh, still a good point stay, but I still think the officials are going to want to have a word with him. Jerry Myatt, we haven't talked about him yet uh, all day, but he is in 18th place. Uh, he, is have, he has put together a pretty decent showing. Uh, he has been one of the slowest cars on track, but he is doing a great job staying out of trouble, and he might get a top 20 out of his efforts here today. Uh, Kale Burnfart Jr. has dropped out of the top 10 for the first time all race on lap number 34 of 39. He runs 11th. This is still a fantastic showing for the 51 car, but you can't help but think that he might want a bit more uh, out of his performance today, especially since he started on the outside pole. But still, it's a good day for the 51 team. Uh, looks like Duncan Cobb is losing uh, quite a bit of ground to James Hewitt, who is right up on his tail there. Uh, Hewitt has closed the gap to within a few, uh, like a couple car lengths now, uh, with just uh, just a few laps to go. This is four laps to go, and uh, oh wow, he just slid sideways. Ike Durbin, oh no, Ike Durbin's done. Ike Durbin's ha got a problem entering the carousel. He's gonna pull that car off to the side of the. He's he's stopping on track. Ike Durbin's day is done from the lead with four laps to go. And here is the battle for the lead now. Duncan Cobb has an excellent chance to win it. Uh, although it looks like Hewitt, Hewitt's making a move on the inside, and Hewitt's going to try and take the lead here. But he's he might have to check up for that kink. He's going to have to check up for the kink, and Duncan Cobb continues to hold the lead over James Hewitt now. A surprising development with four laps to go, as Duncan Cobb now is in a position to win his first ever PCC Cup Series race. Duncan Cobb has not had a great season at all. He's really been mired back in points, but here is a shining chance to make something out of nothing, and Duncan Cobb is doing all that he can. He's got a two-second lead over James Hewitt. Actually, it's more about a one-second lead over Hewitt. Hewitt has the superior speed, but Duncan Cobb, he has done this before. Uh, he's been around the series. He's been in lights, and I think he might be able to hold strong here at the end of the race. Mark Burt uh, has also done an excellent job. He's running in fifth place now. Uh, that is Ramsey Cockner right behind him. That is actually for position. Uh, but Mark Burt has worked his way up to the top five. Nothing has happened to him. Uh, that's befallen most of his uh, rivals, but Mark Burt looking at a very strong finish here today. Uh, you notice the rookie stripes. He is a rookie. This is his first time at the track, and he's doing an exceptional job here today. Oh, John Jefferson he was looking to have a good run, but unfortunately the engine on the 23 car is going to give up the ghost, and uh, that's going to be the end of the day for the 23 car. He's trying to pull it wide in the carousel to try to give people room, but uh, the curbs are there. That might... Oh, oh, no. I That that was a blind corner, so to be fair to D'Souza, um, he didn't really have much room to go. Two laps to go. Battle between Duncan Cobb and James Hewitt for the lead. Uh, Nicholas Cordovos is a non-factor. He is uh, 30 seconds ahead of these two cars. So uh, they can lose about 15 seconds and still have the lead. Hewitt drove wide. Hewitt has driven wide, so now Duncan Cobb's got a bit more of a cushion. Uh, looks like Dan Ferre here. Um, lap 38, just two laps to go. He couldn't quite hold it on the track for all 39. And he's going to hit the tires there, and uh, that's going to do quite a bit of damage to that uh, 96 car, but he's going to keep it going. Uh, unfortunate for Dan Ferre, I was hoping he'd keep it off the tires all race, but it seems like that's not going to happen. Uh, here is uh, the battle for the lead with just a lap and a half to go. It looks like the 155's managed to get his footing back despite running wide in that turn. Uh, he is closing in once again. So James Hewitt making... Uh, making up ground everywhere that he can. Uh, he's pulled, he's he's shrunk the gap even more, uh, and Duncan Cobb is hanging on for dear life at this point, as he is trying to win his first ever PCC Cup Series race. 
Well, it would be due to a penalty handed to a driver. I think he might. I think he'd want it any way he, that he could get it. He went right up on Duncan Cobb's bumper now as we come down the uh, front straightaway to start the final lap of the race. White flag in the air. Lap number 39 has begun. So now Duncan Cobb just needs one more lap to hang on as best as he can. He's holding on to the lead, but it looks like uh, James Hewitt going side by side on the last lap coming out of Station 5. James Hewitt is side by side with Duncan Cobb. Uh, oh, Hewitt ran a bit wide, kicking up some dust there. Hewitt doing all that he can. Duncan Cobb manages to pull it a bit. Oh, he out he overbroke. Duncan Cobb runs it off, and Hewitt has taken the lead, entering the carousel. James Hewitt, I believe he just won this race with that move, entering the uh, with the turn, entering right before the carousel. Hewitt uh, coming through the kink. It looks like he is clear. He has sailed away as uh, Cordovos takes the checkered flag first, but coming through the final turn uh, at the on the last lap, James Hewitt is going to take the win here at Road America in front of a disappointed Duncan Cobb. You can't help but feel for Duncan Cobb here, but James Hewitt has taken the day here today. Now taking a look at the results, you saw how the top two ended up, but Nicholas Cordovos managed to open up enough of a gap on the rest of the field to come home and take the final podium position. So uh, despite driving like an absolute maniac, Nicholas Cordovos still walks away with a podium. Uh, PCC Cup Series officials are still going to have a word with Cordovos, uh, so I would expect a points penalty to be coming his way uh, at some point in the next few days. Barney Ward takes fourth place, and Mark Burt takes fifth. So, two excellent runs for two rookies, Brian Gallagher in 6th, Ramsey Cockener has his best run since Surfer's Paradise, 7th uh, place, Sapphire Anderson, despite uh, wrecking Frank Azzaretto, finishes in 8th place, Cale Burnfart Jr., uh, a rare top 10 on a road course for him, and uh, Kurt Pliskin rounds out the top 10. Uh, Joe Craig manages to finish in 11th place. Uh, didn't get the top 10 he was looking for, but still an excellent run for that 26 team who has struggled all year. Barbara Burt in 12th, Josh Marshall in 13th. Uh, Ryan Matthews has just outperformed his machinery all, all year, and a 14th place here at Road America is a testament to that. Uh, Jerry Myatt had an excellent run as well. He kept his nose clean, stayed out of trouble, and brings home a 15th place finish. Chris Benson, despite his sponsorship woes and team infighting, brings home a 16th place finish. Dan Foray, despite throwing it off, with two to go, finished in 17th place. Kelly Blackwater still manages a top 20 despite uh, getting spun by Alina Lazareva. Daniel Sharp finishes in 19th place. Didn't talk about him all day, but he kept his nose mostly out of trouble uh, despite that lap one spin and brought home in the top 20. And Preston Bell rounds out your top 20. And now taking a look at the point standings, Nicholas Cordovos has taken the points lead over Ike Durbin, who uh, had a dismal run. Uh, I believe he finished outside the top 20. Uh, James Hewitt moves up to third place. Uh, Brian Gallagher is fourth. Gaspar D'Souza slips down to fifth uh, after having engine woes and uh, crashing into John Jefferson late in the going. Mark Burt, best running rookie, is in sixth place uh, with 139. Sapphire Anderson, seventh. Uh, Preston Bell, Lenny Jacobs, Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer rounds out the top 10. Ian Elias. Kelly Blackwater, Barney Ward, Kurt Pliskin, Tom Delgado, Daniel Sharp in 16th place. Tied with Kurt Pliskin and Tom Delgado, he has been a model of consistency in underpowered equipment, and uh, he really should not be as high as he is in points. I'm going to be entirely honest, Daniel Sharp is doing wonders with that 169 team. Uh, so is Ryan Matthews in the 0-2, and John Jefferson in the 23. Uh, Josh Marshall and Alex Phillips round out the top 20, but keep in mind that these points are unofficial and uh, there are no points penalties that have been factored in. And lastly, looking at team points, Griffith Motorsports has taken the team lead over Paloma Autosport. However, this is also uh, not factored in any uh, penalties that might be incoming. Uh, if you also look from 6th down to uh, 12th is a gap of exactly 20 points, so the the swing of things from 6th to 12th, 
the midfield is incredibly competitive, uh, which is very shocking. Even Zactec Motorsports team is currently out of relegation by one point, but they're still out of relegation. Lucas Motorsports had a terrible run today, and they sit last 14th with 265 points, 29 points behind ROG Motorsports, 